Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today, I'm going to be showing you the Boolean modifiers within the part and part design workbench. So firstly, what is a Boolean? Well, these operations create complex solid geometry out of primitives, such as a cube, cylinder or sphere. Now when using these tools, the geometry you use must be Open Cascade Technology, or OCCT for short. What this means is, you must use parts made within the part, part design or sketcher workbenches. Meshes can't be used with these Boolean modifiers unless converted into a solid. However, there are Boolean tools within the mesh workbench where you can create a union, cut or intersect. Booleans consist of three main tools. Cut, sometimes known as difference, removes material from a main piece of geometry using another shape, which is referred to as the tool. This is defined by selecting it after our main part. Union, or fusion, this joins our selected geometry together. Common takes the intersect of two or more shapes. Basically, where the two shapes overlap, it creates a piece of geometry. So to start, I'm in the part design workbench. The Boolean tool can be found up here on the tool ribbon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create myself a new body and create myself an additive cube. I'm going to leave all the parameters the same and click OK. I'm then going to create a new body and in this body I'm going to add an additive cylinder. For this I'm going to set the radius to 5mm. Within the part design workbench you require individual bodies for individual shapes. So our first body is the active one or the one we want to receive the boolean operation and our second body is the tool. Hopefully that all makes sense. As you can see the cylinder is the active body. As I want the cube to be the main geometry of our part, and I want the boolean feature to be projected onto that part, I need to activate that particular body. So I'm going to click on it, right click, and toggle active body. I can now enter into the boolean modifier one of two ways. I can either click onto the boolean modifier itself, and as you can see the cube disappears, and I can add the body of the cylinder like so. Or I can double click onto the cylinder, click on our boolean modifier, and as you'll see, it is added to our parameters tree. The drop down is set to fuse. You can also set it to cut or common. And we click OK. Now you'll see that a Boolean is being created underneath our first body or our active body. And as you'll see, the cylinder is also underneath that. If we click on our Boolean, you'll see that refine is set to false. As you can see, some of our lines remain visible from our fusion operation. By setting this to true, certain lines will be removed, creating a cleaner piece of geometry. When creating a cut within the Boolean modifier, we must make sure that the tool that we are using, in this case the cylinder, goes past the faces of our main geometry. That way it doesn't cause any errors when we complete the cut. So I'm going to cl click on our cylinder and I'm going to change the height from 10 to 12. Now you'll see that this face has moved up and you'll also see that this face is still connected. So I'm just going to move the body down by right clicking and clicking transform and pressing OK. These two faces now don't intersect with each other and these two faces don't intersect with each other. So I'm going to double click back onto our cylinder, click on the boolean modifier, set the drop down to cut and I'm going to press OK. The reason I made the cylinder larger is to avoid any coplanar problems, meaning you need to make the intercept between the shapes clear. This will stop any errors from occurring within your geometry. If the shapes share a face, even if the first operation is successful, it may cause future boolean operations to fail. So what about adding a third shape to our geometry? Well, I'm going to create myself a new body, and I'm going to add myself an additive cone. Again, I'm going to leave all of our parameters exactly how they are. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to right click and transform that within our 3D window, like so. You'll notice again that this is the active body and I want my cube to be the active one, so I'm going to toggle active body. If I go over to our tree, select our cylinder body, hold control and select our cone body, I will then press the boolean modifier and they will be added to our parameters tree. So fuse will work fine, as our shapes are clearly within each other. Cut may work fine now, but could yield the wrong results, as I explained just a second ago. 
and we can't create a common because the three shapes aren't intersecting with each other. So if I cancel that and transform the body to roughly within the center of our cube and press OK, I will then create another Boolean operation on the drop down, set it to common, and you will see that it will create an intersect between all three shapes. As you can see, the bodies have now been put into a Boolean drop down, which also contain our cylinder and our cone. So I've looked at how to add cubes, cylinders and cones, but what about creating our own geometry? In this document I've created three simple shapes. These are all simply sketches that I've just extruded, just to give you an example. Again, I've activated the body that I want to receive the Boolean feature. These two bodies are simply tools. So again, in this case, I'm going to highlight my cube body and my cylinder body, which again are just simple sketches and then extruded, and I'm going to click on the Boolean modifier. In this one, I'm just going to set it to Fuse, and as you'll see, it's fused the shapes in our model tree. If I click that and set the refine to true, this will refine any lines that may have previously existed. To edit your Boolean, just double click it in the model tree and you'll be able to change what you want to. So I could change this to a cut or I could change this to a common. Now I was having slight issues with removing a body within the parameters. I was clicking this and nothing was actually seemed to be happening. So I've just found just to right click and remove and that works just as well. If I now click OK, you'll notice that two of the shapes have been added into the boolean and one of the shapes is left on its own, which can now be moved on its own, compared to the others which will move together. Moving into the part workbench, I'm going to show you how to create this piece of geometry. So here I have five different shapes in my model tree. I'm going to hide the sphere and the cube. You'll see that I've got a cylinder on the x-axis, I've got a cylinder on the y-axis, and I've got a cylinder on the z-axis. Adding all three of those, I've got a sphere, which is a radius of 5mm, and I have a cube, which has a length, width, and height of 8mm. First things first, I'm going to fuse these three cylinders together to make one shape. So, I'm going to select all three of them, and I'm going to click on the fuse or union icon, which is up here on the tool ribbon. In our model tree, that will create a fusion which contains all three of our cylinders. You will also notice that they fuse at the joints where they intersect with each other. Hiding our fusion and making our cube and sphere visible, I'm now going to create an intersect or common using the simple boolean operation up here on our tool ribbon. Now I can use this because I'm only using two shapes. If I'm using any more than two shapes, I can still use this, however I'll have to use some sort of workaround. So if I was to create the fusion, like we have in the last one, I'd have to select the Z and the Y, create a union, and then I'd have to select the fusion, and then select the X cylinder, and create another fusion. That's obviously a longer way of creating a fusion. It could potentially throw up unwanted errors, and I'm not entirely sure how stable our part would be. So in the operation, I'm going to select Insect, and I'm going to select Sphere on the left hand side because this is the piece of geometry that I want to receive the Boolean operation. On the right hand side, in the right hand column, I'm going to select Cube, as this is the tool I want to use. I'm going to click Apply, and that will create our common, which should look a little bit like this. I'm going to close out of that, and you'll see we've now got a common in our left hand tree which contains our sphere and our cube. If I now make our fusion visible, you'll see how the cylinders move out through the flats on our sphere. Now there's two ways I could complete this shape. I can use the boolean operation that we just used by selecting difference, selecting our common as our main shape, and selecting our fusion as the tool. This will then create a cut where we need it. I can also undo that 
I can select our common as that's our main shape, hold control, select our fusion as that's the tool and click on the cut icon which is up here on our tool ribbon. That will also create the same outcome as what we just saw. Again, we now have a new boolean operation in our left model tree which is cut, which under that has the common and the fusion which also then contains all of our shapes that created this part. So let's say we've just created this piece of geometry and we want to alter a couple of the shapes. Well, we can do that. So if I was to change this sphere from a five millimeter radius to a six millimeter radius, that would update like so. If I want to then change, say, the X axis cylinder from a radius of two to three and say, okay, again, it will only update that singular cylinder. The other two are unaffected. So let's say I wanted to start altering this within the part design workbench. I can simply do that by going into the part design, selecting our cut, creating a body from that, and then we can start altering our geometry. So let's say I wanted to create a quick counter bore on this face here. I can then pocket that through simply, so let's say one mil, and we can alter our shape. I have to say I'm very impressed with the Boolean modifiers. In the future, I'm hoping to use them a lot more as it just makes creating geometry so much easier. Even if you don't plan on using them, hopefully I've taught you something new which you can take and apply to your current project or even a future one. This will be my final video for 2020, so I'd just like to say thank you for all the support over the past couple of weeks. It's been great reading your comments and to see that I'm creating content which is helping you better understand FreeCAD. I'm looking forward to the new year where I'll be trying a few new things which will hopefully increase the quality of my videos as well as the content within them. Thank you so much for watching, if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you dislike the video give it a thumbs down. As always have an absolutely epic rest of your year and I'll see you in 2021.